Hey everybody, this is Julian. Welcome back to my channel. And yes, I finally get to wear my onesie on my channel. So I actually got this in Las Vegas with Kira like a month ago. And I started wearing it way before December because my place is super cold here in Santa Monica. But today was like the perfect day to wear it for a video because it's been raining from last night all day and it just stopped raining. My whole patio is soaking wet so I'm definitely not going to be watering my plants until I come back next week. I will be heading back to Las Vegas tomorrow for the work weekend. Ebby and my grandma finally arrived back from Arizona to Las Vegas and they will be coming back with me to Santa Monica. Ebby hasn't been home here in Santa Monica for a good four months. She's been with my mom in Las Vegas and my grandma in Arizona. I don't know if she remembers she has a home here in Santa Monica but I can't wait to have her in my home again because it's just been pretty much been me and my plants when I'm here which is a lot of work and time but it's nice to come home to Ebby so I can't wait to have them back in my space and more videos with them. So the last two days I didn't film any content for my channel because I was at work till like five two days ago and at four o'clock the sun's already down so that day was out for filming and then yesterday I worked a double from six to one and then again from four to eight teaching four classes back to back last night so that was just out I came home for a little bit kind of reset myself for my last half of the day but I've been able to upload daily videos on my main channel which I'm so proud of. I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to do that with my schedule, but I'm trying. And if I don't do daily uploads, I will try to do five videos a week at the minimum. Also, I will be going to Egypt in a month. I will try to pre-film and edit so that there's things to go up on my channel while I'm away. Also, on that note, if you do decide to order any plant orders if you're in the United States, as well as my merchandise for Planting with Julin, you can go ahead and place it within the next month I'll go ahead and ship it out to you before I leave for Egypt and you'll get our holiday card. It's a photo of my grandma Ebby and I which I've been really happy being able to have that as part of the shipments going out to you guys. So I'm in my onesie. I just got home from work and I have a little time. I have like a four hour gap between both studios that I've been teaching at and i wanted to go ahead and do this video while i got my laundry going you see that's multitasking at its finest it's this time of year guys i did this the same time last year where i recommended 10 easy plants perfect for a beginner so this video is really fun for me i guess it could be like an annual thing because this is my second time doing it i did it a year ago i recommended 10 plants easy for a beginner perfect for gifting and if you're new to plants and wanting to add another plant to your collection I'll go ahead and put the link to that specific video in my description box and I will not try to choose those same plants for today's video my plant collection grows by the week and I'm gonna just try to pick 10 plants that's gonna be good for any zone that is very low maintenance that is the goal for this video so this is gonna be really fun for me because I know that video I didn't pre-plan who I was going to choose and I was just picking along the way. Same thing today for this video. I'm just going to pick and choose as we go along in the Let video. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any of the plants that I'll be sharing in today's video and if you have a easy or hard time with them, I would love to know. So the first plant I want to talk about is my beautiful ponytail palm. Now, he doesn't get a lot of spotlight on my channel which is really sad. He hangs out in my patio full time. Just look at the hair on this one. I mean, he's super, super crazy. Um, and I love this guy because he's very low maintenance. I've had him now for, I wanna say two years. I got him in Las Vegas and he is living in a blue planter that I also got in Las Vegas. And I probably spent under $10 on him, maybe around $7, give or take. If you take a look on the top here, do you see all that light green? That's all new growth. There's different variations of a ponytail palm but this one is my favorite just because of the aesthetic of it I just love him a lot and I am going to definitely keep him in the patio because that's where he's happy at and so far he's drama free there is a little browning on the tips I'll just go ahead and just prune him but other than that he's doing really good let me know down in the comments below if you have a ponytail palm in your collection uh, where do you keep it? How big is it? These particular ponytail palms come in a variety of sizes but this has been living full time in my space and I've had him for two years now and so far I have not had any problems with him and I do miss him twice a week 
and he does get watered once a week but he will not get watered for a good minute because of all of the rain we've been getting in Santa Monica so shout out to my ponytail palm he is going to be spotlighted for today's top 10 plants perfect for a beginner very low maintenance all right so that was one who's next all right so i thought i'd give you guys a trailing plant now i didn't talk about this guy in last year's video this is my philodendron brazil he is in a royal blue planter as you can see and I have him on a macrame hanger in my hanging section in my patio. I will do a separate video highlighting all of my trailing plants on that system before the year ends. But I wanted to go ahead and include him in this video because he is definitely super easy to grow. As you can see, tons of new growth. And I picked him up for just, I think, $3 on sale in Las Vegas. And the planter too is probably around $4. Very easy to propagate as you watch my Planting with Julian episode, Propagating for the Holidays. I took two clippings from him. This plant is so easy to propagate. If you watch my Planting with Julian episode, Propagating for the Holidays, I did take two cuttings. And for this particular philodendron, because of the arrow roots, you could cut the particular trail in multiple pieces and get multiple cuttings if you want. This planter is super full, so I'm definitely not going to propagate to fill up the planter, but you could do that if it starts thinning out. Sound of down below, do you guys think this is a low maintenance plant? I love the aesthetic of it with that neon green and the dark green. It definitely gives different vibes to my hanging section of my patio. And I absolutely love this thing. I will also keep you guys posted when it roots up because I'm kind of interested to see how long it takes to give me water roots. But this is definitely going to have to be part of top 10 plants perfect for a beginner so the next one i want to talk about is not very common where i'm from maybe it's common in other places in the world but i want to go ahead and highlight this particular plant because it has grown so much on me since i've had it and it hasn't been giving me any drama this is the hoya carnosa crinkle 8 do you see all of the goodness on this plant so much trails here this plant wasn't trailing this much when I got it and since then there is tons of new growth like take a look at this section right here of the plant you can see there's new growth right there I want to say this is a Hoya Carnoso Crinkle 8 it almost looks like a Chelsea 2 with the dark dimples this plant is hanging in my patio it's been living in my patio full time all of my Hoyas in my collection are doing really good I mean, even my Hoya Carry Carry Eye is doing really good. You guys seen it on my recent video when I talked about it. So this is going to have to be part of today's top 10 plants. Perfect for a beginner. Low maintenance. It does get watered once a week. I missed it twice a week. It's been in the rain for a couple of days, so it definitely won't get water for a good minute. I'll come back next week and check on my collection to see how the soil is but i'm probably thinking it's going to be good for a whole week or even so more let me know down in the comments below if you have any hoyas and do you find it very easy or finicky where you live and where you have them in your home for me because i live in southern california all year long as you can see it is the beginning of december and i am outside in my onesie although it's been raining all day we don't have snow so i don't have to winterize any of my plants and it's just stay where they're at all year long but this has been living in my patio its entire life and just take a look at all of the growth here and i absolutely love hoyas actually purchased one for julie's collection the obovada which i love and so far it's doing good in her space sound off down below and give me your thoughts on hoyas do you think they're drama free plants for me they are and they're also on the hardy side they're that waxy type plant so definitely low maintenance and i have this in my patio where there's just sun that comes and goes so no direct sun it does get morning sun and then the sun shifts and i have a big tree over my space which creates a lot of mess but for the most part it is not in direct sun i would want to say it's in partial sun and partial shaded so i want to say for my patio space i think all of my plants is partial sun partial shade because of the sun moving over my home with the big tree it doesn't get direct sunlight all day but it does live out here full time so i wanted to go ahead and highlight this plant it's in a macrame hanger and this particular planter i think i got at orchards when they were open and i just love white planters 
with an all green trail. I think it's just so stunning. I wanted to go ahead and highlight one of my Hoyas for this year's top 10 because I didn't mention them in last year's video and I definitely wanted to include at least one of them in today's video because so far I haven't had a Hoya that gave me any problems and I want to keep it that way but okay. so far so good. I have number four and he's been spotlighted a few times on my channel. This is my beautiful I know, wow, it takes up a lot of space in this frame. My Pultos enjoy, guys. Take a look at this. It lives full time in my patio. As you can see, there's tons of trails. And no matter what direction he's in, he is definitely stunning. I think I got him for $8. Yes, $8. And he just has so much vibes. I love this thing. I've had it for a couple of months in my space. I've propagated it. You've seen it on a recent video that I shared propagating for the holidays and I just love the trails and just the variegation of the whole thing. Any pothos, I find it very easy to grow and propagate. So if you can't find this particular one, which is not everywhere, I don't see it definitely everywhere, but it may be common where you live and if you have a chance to pick this guy up, I highly recommend it. I recommend any philodendron or pothos for a beginner and you know what they give so much vibes and aesthetic to your space you can just have this in a corner by itself and it'll definitely give a lot of attention and just the perfect amount of green in your space if I had more natural lighting in my home more windows in my home besides my one window by my kitchen sink I would love to have him like hanging in the corner somewhere by a window but this guy lives full time in my patio and I do move him from time to time in different places in my patio but he does live out here full time. I have him in a beautiful terracotta planter. Again, if I had more white planters, he would definitely be in a white one. But so far so good. He's been, you know, hanging out in the rain and he is definitely lush. He's been loving the rain. So I want to see how big is this thing going to get. I know this thing is a grower. It's definitely gonna give me more trails. There is a few long trails here. And I started off with a really small one and then I got this one as my second one because I just seen it and I had to have it. I didn't care if I had a smaller one of it. I wanted a big one and I spent like under $10 for this. So it definitely wasn't a lot of money for me to get a second one, but it shows how much I love the plant. Had a small one purchase a bigger one and I do that from time to time for plants that I absolutely love I just I want another one so I wanted to spotlight this guy for top 10 plants perfect for a beginner because it's definitely drama free and of course you can propagate it and make more babies I will also let you guys know when the cuttings that I took for my propagation video gives me roots and I absolutely love him and I I love variegated plants. Okay guys, so number five, and I'm trying to pick plants that are not in the same family and that I haven't featured in last year's video. So I'm gonna go ahead and dedicate number five to this guy right here. This is my beautiful arrowhead vine. I got him, I wanna say a couple weeks ago. This particular arrowhead is doing so well in my space. Look at the vibes of this vine here and then check out this brand new baby leaf coming through. Do you see that? This plant is so stunning and I just love the aesthetic of the plant. It's been living in my patio full time and I'm loving the trails. If I could have this like on a top shelf trailing down, I mean, I would love yeah. that. I picked up this white planter from a plant shop in Chinatown here in Los Angeles and it's doing pretty good. I mean, take a look at the top here, top point of view. Over a year and a half ago, I was struggling with my baby arrowheads. They didn't do well with me, but I did notice that my bigger arrowheads, I do have another one, plus this one, has been doing really good on me. So I suggest the arrowhead only if you can get it in this size. I don't suggest the smaller ones. The bigger ones do well with me, the smaller ones didn't do well with me. So if you can get a big arrowhead vine, at this size, I highly recommend it. It's been doing so good on me. I'll highlight another growth here that's coming through. If you see right here, there's another leaf popping through. But take a look at the aesthetic of this plant. I think it is so fun. And I'm definitely rotating it so that it can get 
even distribution of sun and who knows what it's gonna look like in the next year but I'm gonna try to train it to have some nice growth on here and I just I think this vine just I love it a lot I also love the variegated green the two-tone green on here I just I love it a lot and it currently lives right on the side of my gate and I see it every time I go in and out of my space also let me know down in the comments below if you've ever had any drama with the arrowhead do you find that the smaller arrowheads do really bad and the bigger ones do really good because that's my experience I will definitely not get any more baby arrowheads in the future I have number six with me and I did pick a Sensevieria last year but I didn't pick this particular variety so this is part of the Sensevieria collection I will do a sense of very collection video after my end of the year tour. This one is the starfish. Kira and I have it. We got it at the same time. I got it for a couple dollars in Las Vegas. I have it paired in a planter that I got, I think, from Home Goods. As you can see, it's been raining hardcore and it is soaking wet. So this thing won't get water for a good minute. And if you look really good, there's one baby here and another baby here. I, it wasn't there when I bought it. It was just this main guy here. So I'll definitely do Sensevieria propagation videos in the future. Very low maintenance plant. And of course it's on the hardy side so it can take some neglect and it won't be upset. This plant lives full time in the front of my house where if anything they would get full sun if there was sun and I have it amongst the rest of my hardier plants, my agaves and some cactus babies. I will also redo the front part of my house when my grandma comes back next week. We'll do it together as a project. I'll go ahead and film that for the channel. So let me know if you have Sensevarias and do you have this particular guy. He just brings so much vibes. I love the starfish and I can't wait to see how many more babies is he going to give me in the future because from the two years that I've had him, he's giving me two babies. So that's pretty good. This guy's doing really good with me. So I want to recommend this guy. Daifenbachia's dumb canes, for the most part, are very low maintenance plants. They're very readily available. You see them in grocery stores, in nurseries, plant shops. So I wanted to recommend this guy because no matter where you are, there's probably some kind of variation of a Daifenbachia dumb cane plant. This is the one that I have. And I've never had any problems with this. So, as you can see, there's a beautiful variegation on this plant. And this plant is a very common office plant. You see this maybe when you're checking in somewhere in an office, or at least for me, I've always seen them as office plants. So they're very good with low lighting. I have this particular plant in my patio, and it lives full time in my patio. As you can see, there is a little new growth happening right here. And so far, so good. If you can take a look right here, there's more growth right here. Also, let me know down in the comments below if you agree with me that the Daifenbachia Dumb Cane plant is an easy house plant to have. I've never had any problems with it. And again, I think that's why this is one of the go-to plants styling in offices and businesses because of the low maintenance and that it can handle, for the most part, low light. I want to see what this plant is going to look like a year from now. I've had it in my collection for a couple of months that Kira gave to me to rescue. But ever since I've had it, I've never had any problems with it. So if Kira's watching this, here's the update on your rescue plant that you gave me. I've never had any problems with it and I absolutely love having this one in my collection. And it's in a thrifted planter that I got a while ago from Las Vegas. I have two of them. I think my peace lily is in the other one and then this guy is in this one. So. I wanted to go ahead and include him for number seven. My hands is all wet and dirty because everything is wet in my patio from the rain. Number eight's gonna go to another variegated baby. Here is my variegated peace lily. This was actually a birthday gift from Catherine and I absolutely love the variegation of the leaves. There's no blooms on here but there's tons of new growth. This is such an easy, low maintenance plant. I'll go ahead and spin it here without getting dirty from the wet planter. And if you see here, this leaf just unfurled and there's tons of new growth. I can just go ahead and just peek through here and see all of the new babies popping out. This plant lives full time in my patio. This would also be great if you want to have one plant in the corner in your home. I highly recommend the Peace Lily. As you can see, 
there is tons of green vibes when it comes to this guy and I'm kind of interested to see when is it going to give me a new bloom. When I did get the plant for my birthday in August, I think there was one or two blooms and they died off. But I think the plant is still stunning regardless if there's a bloom or not. I mean, take a look at it. I'm going to bring it back so you can see a whole point of view on it. Now also, it lives in that same style planter, that thrifted planter that the Daifenbachia is in is the same one that the peace lily is in so i got two and i was really lucky i scored these planters in las vegas at a thrift shop for about a dollar fifty and i just i love the vibe it's very good classy and elegant so i thought the peace lily would be perfect in it so yes i've had this plant now since august so for a couple of months but so far there's a lot of new growth and i love seeing this particular plant in my space and i'll just go ahead and highlight another baby leaf that just unfurled here for me i think it's absolutely stunning I'll keep you guys posted when it ever blooms on me again but number eight is gonna go to this beautiful variegated peace lily that i think i was very fortunate to get because i've never seen a variegated peace lily up until we stumbled upon this one in west hollywood it's getting narrowed down to two more guys so it's now narrowed down to the last two plants and of course i want to pick up my rubber plants and i want to pick up my spider plants but we've highlighted them last year in 2017. i still stand by those plants as part of top 10 plants perfect for beginners and all of the plants i featured in the 2017 top 10 plants i still stand by them they're doing all great so we're not going to go ahead and pick those up as much as i want to i'm trying to pick plants that are low maintenance that i haven't featured from last year's 2017 top 10. So I'm going to include a peperomia. In last year's video, I did include the obtusifolia. This year, I'm going to include another peperomia. So this is the peperomia I'm going to highlight for this year's top 10. Again, philodendrons, peperomias, pothos, I love them all. I highly recommend any of them for a beginner plant or a plant perfect to gift. This is my red edge. It is in a beautiful white planter with butterflies and flowers on it. I think I got this from Home Goods. I'm gonna try to tip the plant this way so you can see the top point of view. As you can see, it is nice and full. The red edge, I mean, I don't wanna pick and choose, but this is probably, well, maybe at least my top three peperomias in my whole collection. Out of all of the come with me videos and places I've gone to for my channel, I rarely see the red edge. I've maybe seen it once or twice, no more than three times. So maybe it's just not a common plant where I live and maybe it is for you. I love this thing because of course the red edges and just the dark green vibes to it. It is on that waxy side. So it's a hardy plant, the succulent like plant. And I absolutely love all varieties of peperomias, but the succulent varieties are like my favorites just because they're on that rubbery waxy side. And I just love that. My obtusifolias are all doing great. I've highlighted one of them for last year's video, so I want to go ahead and dedicate 2018 to the red edge. I'm going to lift it up one more time. You can see all the baby leaves, that light green baby leaves, popping through everywhere. I mean, no matter where you turn the plant, it's just vibes. This lives in my patio full time. Every time I do my plant gang in my home, I switch it up so that I get a different variety of plants. This has been in my plant gang before in my home, but for the most part, full time, living in my patio, and so far so good. I'll definitely propagate him in the future. In my next propagating video for the holidays, I'll probably do one more uh, before the month ends. When my grandma comes back, we'll do another part two propagating for the holidays, and we'll go ahead and propagate this guy but I love the fullness of this thing. And I think when I picked this up, maybe I got it for $18. I got it in a nursery in Lakewood, about 30 miles or so from me, or maybe 50 miles from me. It was definitely not nearby, but it was the first time I've ever seen the pepperoni. I was the only one at the time at that nursery and I scooped it up and I, I love this thing a lot. So I think it was worth the money and I can't wait to propagate it, but hey guys, it is doing so good. I see all the brand new baby leaves and I love peperomias. So shout out to number 10, my peperomia red edge. All right, so I'm gonna end top 10 today with a baby that is been with me for a good minute. I absolutely love this thing. I did feature it on a Meet My Plant episode months ago. I know last year in the top 10 for 2017, 
I did include the J plant, so I'm not going to do any succulents or cactus. I'm just sticking to house plants. So this is going to be my last one for top 10 plants, perfect for a beginner. And I absolutely love this thing. This thing is so huge. I'm going to pick it up and get it up here in the frame. Here it is. Do you guys see this? Can't even see myself, but this is the top point of view of my bird's nest fern. It is so huge. I'm gonna try to not get myself dirty because it's been raining for the last couple days. It's in a beautiful white planter. It's been living in this planter, I think pretty much its whole entire life. And as you can see, there is tons of growth. And this thing is so healthy. As you can see, I can't even fit in the frame. Let me try to back up a little bit so you can see me. I absolutely love this fern. I don't do anything to this thing and it grows pretty much perfect. I water it once a week, it gets misted twice a week, and that is about it. So this plant, as you can see, is doing just perfectly fine in my space. I think as long as you don't have it in direct sun, you water it once a week, mist it twice a week, give it that tropical vibe, you will not have problems growing this thing. This thing is so low maintenance. I have it tucked away in the back corner of my patio, let me get here. I have this thing uh, tucked away in the back part of my patio and I just let it do its thing. I don't do anything to it. I just have it in the space there next to my red Congo philodendron and I love this fern. That is going to wrap up the top 10 plants perfect for a beginner. I did choose a variety that are specialty type plants and plants that are commonly found that you could find in grocery stores, nurseries, or plant shops. I hope you guys enjoyed the variety for top 10 plants perfect for a beginner. Again, I didn't want to choose the same plants that I chose for 2017. I'll go ahead and put the link in my description bar for that top 10. I stand by all of those plants that I featured in last year's video, but for this year's video, I wanted to choose all new plants and plants that were drama free low maintenance that's been doing great in my collection i absolutely love these things we got sensivarius a pothos a philodendron the peace lily diphenbachia a fern the ponytail palm an arrowhead and i'm missing anybody else the pothos and joya they're they're all great plants let me know down in the comments below if you have any of them do you find them to be easy growers in your space? Also, let me know down in the comments below, will you be gifting plants to anyone over the holiday season? I know you guys probably hear this a lot and I am probably repeat myself a lot on this, but I truly believe that plants are a gift that keeps on giving. As long as you take good care of it, you'll have it for years and years and years. And the cool thing about plants is that you can propagate it, pass it on to friends, family members, give it as gifts, sell them off, and you can get more for your money. So I highly suggest giving plants over the holidays Holidays or for special occasions throughout the year if you watch my channel you know I gift all of my friends family and just people that I know in my life plants because I just love having green vibes in people's spaces and I think when you see plants in your space it just makes you want to just relax and I love that so that's gonna wrap up today's video I am going to go ahead and finish up my laundry and take a little moment before I head back on the road to teach two group classes tonight I will be leaving to Las Vegas in the morning, coming back with my grandma. So if anything, I will definitely go ahead and film my Planting with Jolene winter 2018 collection that my grandma's been working on in Arizona. I'm so excited to release this merchandise and I've been using it now for the past month but I just haven't said anything on my channel about it. So stay tuned for that. And we'll definitely be doing more planting videos with my grandma and Ebby when they are back here in my space over the next month. So stay tuned for that. If you guys enjoyed this year's top 10 plants perfect for a beginner for 2018, let me know down in the comments below. And I can't wait to see the plants that I will choose for next year's top 10 because I just have so many to choose from. So stay tuned for a Planting with Julian winter 2018 collection reveal video. We'll be filming that probably in the next two days with my grandma in Las Vegas. She's been working really hard over the last month sewing these products so if you do purchase anything from the fall and winter line as well as any plant babies from now until the time I leave for Egypt in a month you will get my holiday card with my grandma Ebby and I in this really cute photo we took in Arizona can't wait to see them if you guys felt inspired and you're new welcome to my channel hit the subscribe button 
Also click the bell to be notified whenever I do an upload because you never know. For the most part, if I'm in LA, I try to get it first thing up in the morning with my Vegas schedule. Maybe it might go up later in the day. I've been doing really good doing daily videos, so definitely give this video a thumbs up. My whole patio is soaking wet because it's been raining for the past 24 hours and I'm just glad the rain stopped so I could film this video before I leave to Las Vegas tomorrow morning. That is going to wrap up the video. Also, shout out to my onesie guys. I think you guys should just give me a thumbs up just because I'm rocking this cute little onesie that I got. And by the way, buffalo pad is my favorite plaid. I just, if I could wear buffalo pad all year long, like that would just make me really happy. I am going to now continue finishing my laundry up and get ready for my second part of my work day. I'm teaching two group classes in the Mar Vista area. And I'll see you guys in Las Vegas. Aloha from Santa Monica, California and my rainy wet patio. Bye guys.